Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. It's one of the best games on Nintendo 64. You know the whole story, you know, being one of the best selling games of all time. Naturally, it spawned a direct sequel called Majora's Mask. So how good is it compared to the masterpiece known as Ocarina of Time? <laughs> Let's take a look. Now, before I begin, I want to thank the new camera that was bought at Best Buy, as well as the Any Video Converter for letting me get the game footage off of YouTube. This footage is from the 64 version. The only copy I got of it, though, is uh, on the Zelda Collector's Edition for GameCube. And it doesn't matter anyway, they're pretty much the same game except uh, the color scheme of the buttons kind of got swished on the GameCube version. But uh, I have encountered times on the Collector's Edition where the sound got weird on the Majora's Mask port and once the game crashed and I lost my save data. That's just an issue with the port and probably doesn't happen with the uh, original version and it hasn't happened with the other games on the disc. I'm getting way off track, let's just start this thing. Anyway, the game starts you out in the woods. The intro test states that you are looking for a lost friend. You mean Navi? Yeah, because Navi left at the end of Ocarina of Time. Since, you know, this, it makes sense, doesn't it? But wait a minute. Didn't everyone hate Navi? Never mind. Anyway, two fairies jump out in Scary Pona, resulting in you falling off and getting the wind knocked out of you. Wow, what jerks. A skull kid wearing a mask appears and seals your ocarina. When you wake up, the skull kid steals your horse. Wow. You're pretty mad at that guy, aren't you? Yeah. Now, you go and chase after him. Doesn't work out well, he kinda gets away. So you have to chase him on foot. And this is when you notice the gameplay is exactly the same as Ocarina of Time. Everything is there. Everything. You know, the sword play, the targeting, it's Z on 64 and uh, L on uh, GameCube. Or whatever. <laughs> and all the flips and tricks they can do in Ocarina of Time is in Majora's Mask. So you think it's gonna be like a cheap clone of Ocarina of Time with the whole same gameplay stuff like that. But wait a minute. As you chase the Skull Kid, you fall down a hole. And then when you land, the Skull Kid turns you into a plant called a Deku meaning you have to master new controls. Now it's starting to get interesting. Anyway, you team up with a fairy named Tattle, whose brother Tail is still with the Skull Kid. <laughs> Get it? Tattle Tail. You know, because... Uh, can someone explain it to me? Anyway, you end up in a land called Termina, which is a world peril to Hyrule. You find the Happy Max salesman there, you know, the guy who owned the Happy Max shop in Ocarina of Time. Yeah, he gets a bigger role here. But it turns out he's a bit of a nutcase, too. I'll explain that later. He sets you w with the task of getting a mask that's called Majora's Mask back from the Skull Kid. <laughs> you see that? Because the title of the game is... Ah, forget it. Not only that, but you have only three days to save this world from a giant moon with a face. Dang, that's intense. But before you can save this world from certain destruction, you must find the Skull Kid, get your ocarina back, and use the Song of Time to travel back in time and turn back into your normal form. The Deku form is converted into a mask. There are more masks you get as the game progresses. However, since you didn't get the Majora's Mask back, the Happy Max Salesman turns into the Angry Max Salesman and shakes the crap out of you like this! If you want to know why this Max is so important, go play the game, because I'm not explaining that. 
if you have a copy of the game, whether it's on Nintendo 64, GameCube, or more recently Wii Virtual Console, just find it there. Jeez. In order to save Termina, you have to go through four dungeons and beat the bosses. That's right. Only four! Really, only four? Uh, just, just look at Ocarina of Time. The first three dungeons, five temples, and Ganon's castle already make more than twice that. And if you count the ice cavern and the bottom of the well, that's eleven. Eleven! Eleven! However, they do make up for that by giving characters more backstory. Even characters that you've never thought twice about in the previous game get interesting. That's quite a feat. Like the, uh, like the guy that goes around in Ocarina of Time uh, quoting that line from uh, Alice in Wonderland, uh, I'm late, I'm late for a very important date. He's now a villain. And to date, he's actually the only non-playable character that's not a monster that you can actually murder. That's right. The overall tone of this game is also darker than the previous game. Plus, this is a kind of depressing game, because when you help these characters and have to go back in time, because, you know, the three-day cycle, it never actually happened yet. And you see these people live out their lives unaware that you even helped them, and even more unaware of their fate. That's tragic. A problem I have with the game is when it gets blurry and disorientated. What's the point of that? It makes me really dizzy. When that happens, I feel like I'm going to have a seizure. Now, the music is just as fantastic as ever. Hear that? Enough said. Overall, this is actually a great addition to the series. I feel people overlook this game because it takes place somewhere other than Hyrule and it's so different gameplay wise. However, I have to admit, it still isn't better than Ocarina of Time. It really does stay on its own though. However, the increased focus on side quests turns some people off. I don't really mind it, but that, that's probably one of the reasons why people got turned off by this game. But hey, look at the bright side. At least they didn't do what they did with Super Mario Bros. 2. By the way, if you want to know about that, that's coming next time. Now for the score. I'll give it four fairies out of five. So anyway, nice to have you here. Bye bye. Oh, um, by the way, this is one of the few Zelda games that I haven't beat. True story. Anyway, the game starts you out in the woods. The game... <clears throat> Let me start that over. The Skull Kid is wearing a mask. Oh, let me start that over. A Skull... Bleah. 